talking about closing out strong, finishing strong, just to prepare for a new year. But sometimes we don't think about the middle of the year. And often it's in the middle, halftime. It's called a halftime adjustment uh, in football, in basketball. There's a halftime adjustment where you evaluate what happened in the first half and you make adjustments for the second half. Because sometimes things come up and things happen in the first half that were unexpected. But you can make an adjustment in the middle and sometimes the middle of a race, the middle of a battle, uh, the middle of a year, the middle of a season is an important time to make sure that you have new strength. I decree new strength for you in the middle of the year. If you've had some tiredness coming because of just life, busyness, family, children, finances, work, career, and you're coming now and you're kind of getting tired, I decree new strength and I decree Psalms 92 and verse 10 that you will be anointed with fresh oil. You will be anointed with fresh oil. Psalms 92, 10, a fresh anointing will come upon you. Fresh oil, fresh strength, fresh power, fresh wisdom, fresh might, fresh ideas. I decree and prophesy newness over you in the middle of the year. I decree by the spirit of God that many of you are receiving a fresh anointing, that God is going to renew your youth like the eagle. God is going to renew your strength at this time of the year. You're going to finish the year strong. And the second half of this year will be great breakthroughs, blessing that in the middle of your fight, the middle of your battle, that you're not going to lose. You're not going to become discouraged. You're not going to become frustrated. You're not going to give up. You're not going to lose the battle in the middle. Okay, you can start off strong, but you can lose in the middle and finish weak. No, those who start off strong and those who get strength in the middle, what I call a second wind, new breath, new strength, they usually finish strong, have a great year. So I decree new strength, new things for you. Psalms 92.10 a fresh oil, a fresh anointing. Let it come upon you. Fresh praise, fresh worship, new words. Let it come, new prophetic utterances. Let it touch your life and let God do something supernatural for you in the middle. Now, this message is called, You Can't Have My Beans. And some of you may be saying, what in the world are you talking about? First of all, let me say I love beans. Okay, it has nothing to do with the message, but I love beans. I can eat beans. I love great northern beans, pinto beans, navy beans. I love beans. Lima beans. I love beans. I can eat beans every week. I just love them. And um, so when I say you can't have my beans, it's kind of personal. But there's a scripture of an individual in the Bible by the name of Shama. S-H-A-M-M-A-H. He may be an unfamiliar person to most people, but he's, he's a fighter. And his story is found in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 10 through 12. Very quick story, but very powerful, what this fighter did. 2 Samuel 23, 10 through 12. You can write it down, look at it later, or if you can bring it up quickly on your mobile device, I'm going to read it for you. It says, he arose and, and smote the Philistines. Uh, this is referring to another individual until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword. So the Lord wrought a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to spoil. And then it, it goes into another person by the name of Shema. After him was Shema, the son of a G or A.G. the Herorite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. Now, I know technically lentils may not be beans, but they're like peas or beans. There's a, a bean field, a lentil field. <clears throat> and the people fled <clears throat> from the Philistines. But he stood... <clears throat> In the midst or the middle, 
the middle, some, some translation says in the center of this field. He stood in the middle of the ground and defended it, the bean field, the lentil field, and defended it and slew the Philistines and the Lord wrought a great victory. Sometimes you have to stand in the middle, not on the edge, not on the outside, not running in the middle of the field, in the middle of the year is when you fight and defend your beans from the Philistines. That's why I get this message, devil Philistines, you can't have my beans. You can't have my bean field. You can't have my lentils. When everybody else ran, Shema stood up in the midst of the middle of that ground, the middle of that lentil field and defended it. He defended the beans. He didn't run. He fought. And as a result, defeated the Philistines. He's one of, he's one of the mighty men of David. Defeated the Philistines. And the people then experienced a great victory. You know, sometimes when the enemy comes, if the enemy comes for your beans, for your lentils, don't run. Fight. Defend it. Don't give up your field. Don't give up your land. Don't give up your plot. Stay in the middle. Get right in the center of the field and fight and defend it. This is what Shema did. So I call this message, You Can't Have My Beans. You can, you can type that in the comments on Facebook. You can't have my beans. You can't have my lentils. You can't have my peas, whatever you like. Some people like peas. Some people like beans. I like beans. Some people like lentils. You can't have it, devil. It's mine. It's my ground. It's my plot. I've been growing here. You're not going to come and take my harvest and eat it. Don't let the enemy take your harvest. Defend your harvest. Fight for your harvest. Don't let them come and take what you have planted and what you have sown. This can apply to your finances because finances is, a, is typified by sowing and reaping. It, devil, you can't have my finances. You can't have my money. You can't have my harvest. I will fight. I will stand in the middle of my harvest and I will defend it from any attack of poverty, of lack, any attack of the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the Philistine, the uncircumcised enemy that comes to eat my harvest. If the Philistines would have captured the field, they would have took the harvest because armies have to eat. They have to eat. And one of the things they do is when they conquer a territory, they take the harvest to feed themselves. But no, not only did he rob them of taking his beans of the field, he defended the field and he, he defeated the Philistines. And it says it was a great victory. I prophesy great victories, not just victories, great victories over your life. Great victories in your finances. Great victories over your harvest. Great victories, not just victories, but great victories. I decree and prophesy and speak great victories in the middle of the year, in the middle, as you stand up. If you have dropped your sword, if you've given up the fight, if you become tired and discouraged, pick up your sword again, the word of God, the sword of the spirit, let it come out of your mouth and fight in the middle. Fight in the middle, stand up in the middle the middle of your ground, the middle of your harvest, the middle of your territory and fight and defend it. Defend yourself from the enemy and God. When God sees you standing up, notice this, this man stood up, everyone else left. He didn't run with the crowd. He was strong enough by himself as a mighty man to stand up and defeat the Philistines. He's called one of the mighty men of David, Shema. You may not have heard of him, but remember him, uh, write him down. He's one of those, just a couple of verses in the Bible, but God put him there to encourage us. All these stories in the Bible are not just historical records. They're encouragements to us of what we should be doing as believers. They're given for our, our exhortation, our encouragement, and they're there to encourage us. You can stand up if you have to stand alone. 
if you have to stand alone, if you have to stand alone, when everybody else runs in fear, if you have to stand alone, if you'll stand up, God will give you a victory. If you'll stand up and fight and defend, God will make sure that the enemy does not take your beans, your bean field, your lentils, your harvest. It belongs to you. And so I prophesy great victories. I prophesy new strength. I prophesy a new might in the middle of the year. I prophesy a new fight for you in the middle of the year. As we come uh, to the end of June, I prophesy a new fight. I prophesy new victories over you. No matter what you've gone through in the previous months, no matter how much discouragement and frustration has come against your life, I prophesy that you're standing up like Shema. You're standing up as a mighty man of God, as a mighty woman of God with the spirit of might. You're standing up and they that know their God will be strong and do exploits. This is an exploit. This is a mighty act. This is an individual that God saw what he did and put his story in scripture. Can you imagine? God saw what he did and put his story in scripture so that generation after generation after generation can read it, be encouraged by it, and launch out in faith. Faith will give you the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Don't let the enemy take your faith. Now, I, I have, I, I, I probably am going to be doing. I don't really speak a lot about all the things that are happening in the church, um, all the scandals. It can be very, very discouraging. And I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to expose anybody. I'm not here to put anybody down. I pray for these leaders, but it can be so discouraging until people are giving up on the church when they see all the stuff that's happening. And, 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 and people are saying, I don't want to go to church anymore. Uh, but make sure that you remember the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk chapter two, the just shall live by faith. Why is that so important? Because living by faith is not just about believing God for things. You can use your faith to receive and believe. Uh, living by faith means that you don't lose your faith in God because of what you see happening around you. You don't lose your faith in God. If everybody forsakes, if everybody runs away, if everybody takes off, like in this story, I will stand in faith and I will defend and I will fight the enemy. And when you live by faith, your faith is not in man. Stop putting your faith in man. Don't put your faith in me. Don't put your faith in yourself. Put your faith and trust in God. Don't put your faith in flesh because flesh will always be flesh. And when you see all the things happening in the world, in our government, in the governments, in wars, in scandals, uh, you'll say, my God, is God on the throne? Yes, he is. God is still God. God is still good. God is still saving. God is still protecting. God will still provide for you. The just shall live by faith. You have to remember that our walk is a faith walk. And faith means that no matter how it looks, I walk by faith and not by sight. I don't go by how it looks. It can look bad. It can look like everybody's leaving God. It can look like everyone's a hypocrite. It can look like everyone's a liar. It can look like everyone's in sexual sin. It can look like everyone is, 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 is walking away from the truth of God's word. It can look like everyone is compromising. It can look like everyone is walking away from holiness and the standard. And, and you, if you're not careful, you'll lose hope and you'll become discouraged. But don't lose your faith. Keep your faith. That's what you live by. That's what sustains you. That's what keeps you. The just shall live by his faith. Jesus told Peter, Satan has desire to sift you as we take away your faith. But I pray for you that your faith will not fail you. Your faith will not fail you. Don't let yourself fail when it comes to faith. Believe God. This man Shema stood up in faith and fought the enemy when everybody else ran. What do you do when everybody runs? What do you do when you find yourself all alone? You stand in faith, you stand in the middle, you fight the enemy, 
and God will give you a great victory because there's something about an individual that trusts God, that stands up in the middle, that stands up and fights, that God will not forsake. God will come to your rescue and God will give you strength and power to overcome the enemy. So stand in the middle of the year. Stand at the beginning, stand in the middle, stand at the end, walk in faith, believe God and receive great victories as we come to the middle of the year in Jesus name. Amen. I've been